Hello, boys and girls. We're so glad you're here for Bible Gems. I'm so glad that you've come and you're joining all the kids who are already with us. There's so many exciting stories in the Bible and they're not just exciting, they teach us lessons about how much God loves us. I wonder what exciting story we're going to be learning today. I know that we'll figure it out when we look inside our Bible Gems chest. Do we have a Bible Gems chest somewhere around here? Do you see it? It's right over here. Zachariah, why don't you come help us and see what's inside of this that will give us a clue about what our story is for today. What do we see inside of there? I see two things. Oh, yes, let's take a look at both of them. What's this one here? Can we tell what this is? A lamp. It's a lamp, a lantern. So our story must have something to do with light. I'll hand that to you. And what do we think this is right here? This is a water jug, right? Well, what would those things mean? Why would we need a lamp? Probably if it gets really dark, we don't need to turn this on in the daytime, but if it starts to get dark, we're going to need a light. And what about, uh, what about water jugs? What would we use this for? Drinking. Drinking. We all need water. Do you need water? Yes. And we would probably put some on our plants. Even plants need water. Animals need water too. Well, uh, I know that we need water and light, but what does it have to do with our story? Let's see if there's something in here. Look at that. Here's our Bible gem for today. What do you think this is going to say to us? Let's take a look and see. Our Bible gem for today says, and it's from the book of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Listen to this Bible gem. In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. The earth was empty. It had no form. Darkness covered the ocean and God's spirit moved over the water. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Well, I think that explains to us what this is all about. And I think it also explains to us what the water is all about as well. God created light and he created water. Aren't you glad he did? Yes. Well, let's find out how God created light and water. I think that we have a story that's going to share that with us. In fact, uh, Uncle Darrell and Aunt Sasha are on their way in here right now to tell us more about today's Bible gem. Um, Uncle Darrell. Yes, Aunt Sasha. The Bible says that the earth was created in seven days. I mean, not even seven, six days. Can you believe that? I sure can, but I have a question for you. What's that? Before there was light, what was there hiding in the darkness? What do you mean hiding in the darkness? I thought God created light first. Well, that's true. But also on day one, there was something else that God created. What? Hmm. What do you mean? Well, let me show you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to need a volunteer. Wait, wait, I thought this was supposed to be a story about creation. Okay, well, we're going to do a little science experiment. Is that okay? But science, not a story? Well, you see, creation is... Science. Ah, uh, I've heard that before. Uh huh. All right. So I'm gonna need one volunteer to come up. Okay. Uh, could I get Alexia to come up? All right. Uh, so could I get you to hold this? And don't don't drop it. All right. Well, do you want her to put her hand in or something? Uh, she could if she wants to. Okay. Well, let's. Let's see, do you trust us? Yeah. Well, do you trust him? He's the one telling this creation okay. science story. All right, so just put your hand in there and close your eyes. All right, so let's begin. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh -huh. And the earth was without form and it was empty. Uh -huh. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. deep uh -huh. The deep. Yeah. Okay, I'll continue. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the... Water! Waters! And then God said... Then God said... Yes, then God said, let there be light. 
<laughs> All right. And there was light. And water. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. And water. Okay. <laughs> and so we see that on day one of creation, there was actually water that was hiding in the darkness. This large body of water was called the deep. Uh huh. But how do we know that this water was created on day one? Oh, well, we know that uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, it tells us that all things were created out of nothing. And so water, if it was created during creation week, which we know it was, it would have had to have been created on day one because it was there when the Holy Spirit was moving. That's interesting. Hmm. I never thought about the fact that in order for the Spirit of God to move upon the face of the water, the water had to be there first. That's Good true. point. Good point. Exactly. And do you have any more questions about creation? Well, hmm. I wonder how deep this water or deep was at creation. Do you know? Well, I think someone else might be able to answer that question. The Great Sea, a.k.a. the Mediterranean Sea, can get as deep as about 17,000 feet. And the Pacific Ocean is 36,000 feet deep. But the Bible doesn't tell us how deep the deep was at creation. All we know is that it had to be a whole lot of water. That is deep. And so you can see that although we don't know how deep the deep was, we know that it was a large amount of water. Yeah, I would say, do you guys think that was a lot of water? That must have been a lot of water. But what was God going to do with all that water? Ah, good question. Well, kids, on day two, on day two of creation, God took that water and he divided it into two large bodies of water. Uh. The first body of water consisted of things like rivers and lakes and streams. The second body of water consisted of something that we're going to show you. Uh, oh. Now, this second body of water consisted of things that existed in the sky. And we can see a little bit of it here. I think I see something in there. Yes, so when God separated the waters that were uh, beneath on the earth, there was a cloud that came up. Yes, and That's that cloud amazing. ascended into the sky and it housed things that we know like rain and other things. And so that's how day two of creation took place. <laughs> okay, but still we have a lot of water left. So what else was God going to do with all that water? Another good question. Well, on day five of creation, God took that water and he, he you know, God always likes to create things to fill them with uh -huh. love. Well, God took that water and he filled it with many different living creatures. Okay, like what? Well, you have fish. I'm pretty sure there were whales, and we know that there were other sea creatures like seahorses. Does anyone else know a, a sea creature that might have been in the water? Okay. Uh, uh, docker? A shark. shark. Okay. A yes. A blue whale? A blue whale. Yes. Good, good, good. And so we know that all of these sea creatures filled the water. But also on day five, mm -hmm. God filled the skies with many different birds. Does anybody know a, a bird that, um, that, okay, a cardinal, okay, anyone else? Hawks. A hawk, and one more, one more. Yeah. Sophia? Bob White. Uh, what was that? Bob White. Oh, Bob White. White, Bob, Bob White. White, okay. That's cool, but you know, we're talking about the creation of the earth. Mm -hmm. Where was the land? Ah, uh, that's another good question. On day three of creation, we should have done that before, but day three of creation, God told, he spoke to the water. Have you ever spoken to water, anyone? Uh, I don't think so. No, I haven't spoken to water, but God spoke to the water because he has power. And he spoke to the water and told it to come back and to be gathered together into one place. And then he told the dry, he said to the water to come back and to be gathered to, into one place so that the dry land could appear. And as the dry land appeared, God put a boundary between the water and the land so that the land would not be flooded by the water. That is so cool. Can you imagine what that must have looked like when God separated the water and the dry land just appeared? I sure wish I could have been there. Would you like to have been there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you know, this is a lot of water and we see the fish need water, mm -hmm. the birds need water, the land it has to do with water. Yes. Water seems very important. It is. Well, also our bodies and also the bodies of animals and a lot of plants, most of living creatures need water. In fact, we are made up of a large percentage of water. And so without water, no... Fish. And without water, no... No birds. And without water, no... No us. people. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sure glad God created water on day one. Yes. Okay, so I think we could learn a lot of lessons from the water, it seems. Yes. Well, as we saw on day three, when the water came back at God's command mm -hmm. and it gathered together into one place, we know that that water was obedient. Obedient. Yeah. And so just like that, John the Baptist, remember what he said when Jesus came on the scene? Uh, I think he said, I must decrease, uh -huh. but Jesus must increase. Ah, and so the waters are an example of how when Jesus comes to our heart and he knocks to come in, are we going to let Jesus come into our hearts? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And so when Jesus comes to our heart to try to gain entrance to our hearts, it's for us to say, I will decrease just like the waters. That, it's kind of like this. So yes. the water is decreasing in order to help and fill something else. Exactly. And then it allows for Jesus to increase in our lives. And then who gets the first place in our lives? Do we or does Jesus? Jesus. Jesus, yes. That's amazing. Thank you so much for shedding light that water was created in, on day one. That's amazing. Thank you, Uncle Darrell. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Wow, that was a wonderful story. Thank you, Uncle Darrell and Aunt Sasha. Can you imagine what it would have been like, kids, to be there and to hear God's voice say, let there be light? And it just appears. Let's see if you remember what happened in this story. Now, how was it that God created the water and the light? Did he do it with his hands? He made it, or did he think it, or did he speak it with his voice? Go ahead and tell me. With his voice, the voice of God has power for us. Now, let's see if you remember one other thing. When God created the earth, what was the first thing that was on it? Was it trees, or was it dry land, or was it water, deep water? Water. water. I'm so glad that God gave us water because we all need water to survive. Isn't it wonderful to know that God takes care of each one of us? That we don't have to go around in the dark. Aren't you glad that when you wake up, the sun comes up and there's light and it shows you everything? If there wasn't the sun, if there wasn't the light, what would we be doing? we just kind of be wandering around, bumping into things. Would we be able to see all the beautiful things that God gave us? I'm so glad that I can see them. Uh, I can see you, each of you right here. You can see your parents. And then each day when God wakes you up, he gives you a, a glass of water. And that water says, mm, I want you children to grow big and strong. Well, there's so many wonderful stories in the Bible, and each one of them gives us hope and encouragement. And all we have to do is open up our lives and say, Lord, come and work in my life in the same way that you worked in the lives of others. I am so excited to see you again on Bible Gems and hear what God has for us. We'll see you again next time on Bible Gems. <laughs>